Hey y'all, welcome back to Tater's Garden. I'm doing a little work on the road tiller here today. We had a flat tire and had to go take it in town, get a tube on. So we're gonna try and get the uh, tube on. And we're not the tube on, the tire back on the on the road tiller. Maybe do a little tilling over in the seed garden. And uh, if we're lucky by the end of the day, maybe get a little something planted. The weather's supposed to be improving. It looks, it feels like Warm weather's blowing in. It's supposed to get up to 70 today. All this cloud cover's supposed to blow off. Which would be nice. Make for a great weekend. So, anywho, uh, we've been staying pretty busy. Things have really been taken off. We got to go to our first farmer's market. Not our first one or second one, but it was another great one. We went on Wednesday. We hadn't been for a couple weeks. But it was really good for a spring market in particular. So we're very excited about what the marketing season may hold. Let's try number one up here first. But, anywho, I'll tell you the story about this uh, big tiller we've got. It's by an Italian company called, called uh, BCS. I don't know what those letters stand for. Um, it's regarded as one of, this brand of tiller is one of a few very, very good brands of tillers for people that want to do small, small market farming like we're doing here. Um, technically it's not regarded simply as a tiller, it's called a walking tractor because the tiller box comes off other stuff can plug in. There's different cutter bars, uh, there's a couple different tilling machines, uh, there's a bigger, there are a couple bigger models than this one, and they even have a little bitty hay baler that makes a hay, a hay bale that's maybe 60, 80 pounds a round bale. And uh, anyway, so that was part of the reason when we started the farm. I said, oh, I need a, we need a machine that can do a lot of work, and this one looked very versatile and for the price, which wasn't cheap, mind you. But it seemed like it was going to do, do the most for us. And it certainly is a great machine, very high quality, very well made. Uh, we'll take the, the engine goes in for tune-up once in a while, but the transmission has a uh, lifetime guarantee, and it really is built to last forever. I had to replace the tines. I had to replace the tines on the tiller because they wore out in our soil. Actually, wore them off, basically. And uh, but other than that, I mean, the thing's been great. So what definitely was uh, significant upfront cost to get into it because we got it new. They're hard to find used just because they're not that common. And. Uh, Anyway, the original idea was to have this machine and it was going to be the do-all little tractor <clears throat> and we weren't going to have any other big machines. And that, that worked pretty great for three years and then I realized that I wasn't getting any younger and I had talked to a guy that's been doing this well, he's been doing it. He's been doing it for nearly 40 years, and I, I think he got out of tilling using a tiller. He might have one for just some touch-up work, but basically, he's a small tractor guy, and he was kind of the guy that got me into getting a, a getting one of the farmall cubs is what we've got now for some of the bigger cultivation, the harder soil work, and certainly working the bigger spaces and all the frickin' mowing. Oh my gosh. Uh, that's what really wore me out with this thing, was all the mowing. With that cutter bar, it did a nice job. It would cut the pastures, and they were kind of brushy at that time. So it was really good to use that machine for that purpose, but it wore me out. I mean, all that vibration with that cutter bar going, gah, 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 it's too much. And so when I talk, went and talked to Jeff Poppin, this guy's name, uh, 
he said, you know, you'll be able to stand it for a few years, but then your body's really going to start to feel it. And he was totally right. So I was happy to happy to get my farm all cub. And well, now I've got I've got three of them, but one of them is extra. But the other two, I'm really happy about. Good. Let's go take a look at it. There we go. I lost you for a second there. All right. So, so it looks pretty good for first pass. Let's take a look at it here. Here's a nice little spot. Oh yeah. So, let's see if we can show you this. Um, the tiller did a nice job. This has got. Let's see here. It's got three, four inches of tilt already, and. Uh, so I like to try to maybe, I usually end up doing it three times with the tiller. I'll do it once, wait a few days for this green stuff to break down, do it again. And uh, then on the third pass is when I will lay down my organic fertilizer blend and do my, do my bed making. On that final pass, I don't step in it and, and try and make it look real pretty. Well, hopefully... Uh, well, I know at some point we'll definitely show you all how to do that. But this space here in particular, I did some sheet composting last fall. And so this uh, this white material here, there's a nice big chunk of it actually. That is uh, brewery waste that we get from the Chattanooga Brewing Company. And then the other thing, all this black stuff is leaf mulch that we get from the city and they uh, vacuum up leaves from the curb and then heap it up in a big heap. And folks like me come and pick it up on Friday afternoons, which is the day I better get the Toyota ready to go. Um, and more, so last last year in this particular section that I just rototilled, I did a good job at getting both of those things laid down so that they would be a little bit readier to uh, garden in the spring. I did not plant a cover crop in this section specifically so that I could 
hit it early in the spring because that's been my experience is cover crops are great but to maximize them you got to kind of let them grow out until april or even mayish um, to get the maximum benefit for the from the winter covers and so i didn't bother with that in this space this year um, but probably will next because it, it definitely uh definitely does a good job for it but the the sheet mulching the sheet composting with the uh, brewery waste and the leaf mulch did a nice job and like I said, another pass or two, and this will be ready to plant. I see you over there peeking at the at the hot house and how it's going over there. We'll do an update video on that. Uh, well, next week or two, uh, things have really happened in there. Look out, you guys are going to be amazed. I certainly am. Um, and then, uh, what's the other update? The ch the chicks are going great. We'll do a hopefully do a video on them within the next couple of weeks. We've been fooling with the. This will be a third batch that we take to the feed store to sell them. So we've been fooling with it for three weeks or six weeks. Um, and that's been going pretty well. We're doing, uh, I saw a couple, I heard some cheaping in the hatcher this morning. So I've got to go get the little brood box. I'll brood them until Monday. It's Friday today. I'll brood them until Monday and drop them off at the feed store. So that way uh, they're only getting healthy birds there that aren't all wobbly or whatever. We've been doing about 80% rate, which is pretty good. Since we're doing 100 birds a week, that's as much as we can expect, I would think. Anyway, I hope all y'all are taking care. We will definitely uh, keep you updated on what's happening here and look forward to talking to you again soon. Have a good one.